Masters of kings where the ritual begins. There is no sweet innocence than a gentle sin. In the madness and the soil of that sad earthly sea, only then am I human, oh, only then am I clean. Take me to church. I Hello, my friend. Glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. I want to read to you some scriptures today. I got some things to say. Some things to talk about. Some things that I think as a, as a person, as a, as a people, we may struggle with. You know, there in the book of Revelations, it says, all power and authority will be handed over to this beast. And, and those who are to be thrown into captivity, and into captivity they will go. Those who are to be slain by the sword, then slain by the sword they will be. And it's a call for patience. It's, it's a call for endurance. And I, I truly believe that the patience and the endurance, what are we being patient with? What, what is it we're trying to endure? The will of God. Being patient with the will of God, we must endure the will of God. For whatever God wills, that's what it will be. If God wills to the sun shine, then surely it will shine. If he wills the moon to stay in orbit, then the moon stays in orbit. If God wills the trees to grow, then surely the trees will grow. I want to speak something to you today. I got some scriptures to read. Did Jesus preach against the Torah? Did Jesus preach against the things Moses pre preached against? A lot of people believe that we no longer have any need for the Old Testament or the Torah because Jesus nullified it or took it away. And I don't think that's true. I don't think he preached against it. In fact, Jesus said, if anyone preaches against the Torah, they'll be known as the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who preach and teach the commandments of God, they will be known as great. After speaking with the rich man, Jesus pulls his disciples aside 
is they were asking him, what's in this for us? I mean, we left families. We left our homes, we, we left our jobs. All to follow you. And the rich man, he was unwilling to follow Jesus. He followed all the commands, but did not follow Christ. As Jesus said, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me, and then you'll be perfect. And he walked away sad. Peter and the disciples say, what about us? We left everything for you. Jesus reminds them, everyone who left family and home and job for his sake, for the sake of the gospel, surely would not lose their reward, but would gain eternal life. And just after talking to them about that, he pulls the 12 aside. Luke chapter 18, verse 31 says, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit on, and after flogging him, they will kill him. And three days later, he will rise. And they couldn't understand it. They couldn't grasp what he was saying. As children of God, the sons of, of God, we, we expect so much turn our lives around, we repent of our sins, and, and we return to God. And in that, we, we expect the glory of God to be seen through us here in this world, and yet this world just can't see it. We expect to gain friends. We expect people to appreciate us to love us, and to care for us. We expect a new rebirth of some sort of social status. That ain't always the case. Listen to this. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging and hearing, and hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Ona, we'll come back to Luke chapter 19 here in a minute. But I want to go back to Deuteronomy, chapter 30, Moses speaking. 
And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you. And he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If you're outcasts, are in the uttermost parts of the heavens. From there, the Lord God will gather you. And from there, you will, from there, he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it. And he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul that you may live. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the voice of the Lord and keep all his commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your room, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again delight in prosper, prospering you as he took delight in your fathers. When you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. Is it not? It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and to bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments, and his statutes, and his rules, then... You shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land of the Lord, the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them, obeying the voice of the Lord. And that's the thing that God, Moses is saying, God, is not in heaven, and God is not over there. Jesus says the same thing. There will be many false prophets come and say, Hey, 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 I know where Jesus is. He's over here in this room. Hey, 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 come here. I know where Jesus is. He's out there in that field. And Jesus says, don't listen to any of them. Where is the Lord your God? Right at the tip of your tongue, he is the breath you breathe, your very life. Your very life. Jesus, the Passover lamb, those who are covered in the blood of the lamb shall not die. And even if the body perishes and this world ceases to exist, you shall not die because you have been covered in the blood of the Lamb. And each one of us who are believers are lambs. We see in the Passover night that God commanded everybody to grab a lamb and they, each family had a lamb. Each family, your loved ones, will be saved by the power of your love, working through faith. And this is not a faith of our own. It's not a faith of their own. This is the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. The faithfulness of God. The Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And each family has been given a lamb. And, and you have been chosen. Many, many are called, but you, a few, have been chosen. And they brought this lamb into their home. And they put the blood on the door and the lentils. And then they ate that lamb. And there was enough for everybody inside the household and, and for their neighbors as well. They had enough if they had left over. Nobody went without. By the power of your love, your family will be healed. Sometimes we're worried about our unbelieving spouse. We're worried about our unbelieving children we're worried about our unbelieving parents, but each family has a lamb, and you are blessed to be chosen by God because God knew that you could obey his voice. And it's the voice of God that says, my desire is that no one would but all would come to repentance through Jesus Christ. I want to read to you something. Chapter 19, Book of Luke. He entered Jericho. Now, where's Jericho? That's the first city after crossing the Jordan, right? 
Joshua and them, they crossed the Jordan River, and the first city they come to was Jericho. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. Remember, Jesus just was dealing with the rich man, and he says, it's impossible for a rich man to get into heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than to get a rich man into heaven. But nothing is impossible for God. What is impossible for man is not impossible for God. He was a tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus! Isn't it amazing? Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus didn't even know Jesus, never met Jesus, was wondering what was all the fuss about. But Jesus knew Zacchaeus personally. Jesus knows your name. Did you know Jesus knows your name? I once said before, even though I'm unwilling, I myself and my family are unwilling to be vaccinated. I want to tell you a little story, and then we'll get on to our read. I think it's important. When I first began my ministry, about nine years ago, I went to this little church and it only had about eight members and six of the eight members were as family or kin to the pastor. Very small church and they were just trying to get started. But he also preached at another church that was downtown, and there's a place called The Mission, downtown Denver. Must be five, six hundred homeless people at that time. Now there's thousands. And they're all sitting there waiting to get into the church, or not the church, but to be fed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to be fed. And he invited me down. There's a church right next door to the mission. And I didn't know it was really like two separate places. He invites me down and, hey, let's go save some homeless people. And, All right. As I was there telling them my story, I had this amazing encounter with an angel of the Lord. Told me I'm going to tell the world one day that Jesus is coming. He says, oh, that's wonderful, that's cool. Hey, I'm gonna go down to the mission. And we do weekly services one day a week down at the church downtown Denver. Let's go save some homeless people. Okay, great. So it was like a Wednesday night and I go down and show up a whole hour early. And there's like 500 people all standing around waiting to get into the soup kitchen to get some food. They're all homeless, doing drugs right there, standing there, half of them are drunk and all messed up. I didn't know. Then you go inside the building and you could either get some food and after you got some food, you could walk over to the sanctuary and go to the church. And it was all one thing. But apparently it wasn't, so I sat there waiting and waiting and waiting and as the line went down and then it was like my turn to go in the building. 
They asked me, well, do you want food? I said, no, I don't want no food. I'm here for, for the church service. Oh, this is the wrong place. You gotta go around the corner and the door's right there. Oh, okay. So I get there and I was there a full hour early. I never saw the pastor or his family or anybody. And I was waiting and waiting and, you know, in this crowd of homeless people. And I had this shirt on that said, because of him. That's what it said in the front. It has these crosses. It was bright orange and black. All black with this bright orange on my chest. And because of him. And it had these three crosses there. And then on the back... It says, because of him, heaven knows my name. So I go in. Well, I tried to go in. And they wouldn't let me in the building. All right, it's late. Doors are closed, and I'm literally like five minutes late. And, no, no, I'm, I'm a guest with, for the pastor. He's expecting me. They, they know I'm coming. Get out of here. Doors are closed. No, no, man. I'm a guest of the pastor. They know I'm coming. I'm supposed to be here. I understand I'm late, but I didn't know the rules. I'm stuck back in line with most the lowly. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the police on you right now. Get out of here! Doors are closed. Now I'm upset. And he stood in that line for an hour. The whole time I felt very uncomfortable. I felt so out of place. Now I'm praying, God, in my heart. God, Father. What do you got me down here for? What are you doing? You, you brought me down here only to be rejected, only to be told to get out of your house? What's going on? So I'm very angry and I'm upset. I'm questioning God, questioning the will of God, questioning my, my purpose. So there I'm going to walk back to my car and I'm standing there at the traffic light waiting to cross the street. And this woman walks up. She's probably mid-twenties. Young lady. She's got boogies running out her nose. Her hair is just a, a complete mess. She looked like She'd been sleeping in the bushes. She had a coat on, and really short skirt on, and some boots. It's probably a crack whore. She looked like one. She looked rough. And I could see she was young. She asked me to bump some cigarettes, so I give her like three smokes. I smoke cigarettes, and I give her three cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, here you go, no problem. Can I read your shirt? Yeah, yeah, read my shirt. I'm not puffed out, not proud. Read it, read my shirt. Because of him. See, you see that? Yeah. I said, look at the back. Check out the back. My back. Heaven knows my name. She reads that. Heaven knows my name. I said, that's for you. You know that. Because of him. Heaven knows your name. Ah, if you knew where I was last night, you would not be saying that to me. <clears throat> I said to her, 
I don't care what any man has ever told you in this world or in this earth. I don't care what church you've ever been to ever in your life. Don't you ever let a man from this world tell you that you are not worthy of the love of God. Heaven knows your name. She falls down right there at my feet, crying. Just broke down, started bawling. And I picked her up. I kissed her on the forehead. I gave her a hug. I said, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And she walked away. And I walked my way. Never seen her again. It's one of the most powerful moments in my life. I don't even know her name. But heaven knows her name. I remember when I told her that, don't let no man tell you're unworthy. I said, don't ever believe. I also said, don't ever believe because you stuck something in your body that's going to take you away from the love of God. And I want to remind you today that nothing is going to take you away from the love of God. Even if you stuck something in your body that doesn't belong there, it will not take you away from the love of God. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and he came down and received him joyfully. Remember Moses says when, when, when we're seeking for God, we're, we're not seeking for somebody to, to, to ascend from heaven. Because the word of God it's on her mouth. It's right here. By faith, we can produce the power of God. By faith, he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they grumbled. He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of all my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. To seek and to save the lost. 
I think that's why I, I love making these videos and I'm out there online and I'm inside the MeWe social media group. It's darkness. It's evil. It's filled with lost people. Look at the internet. It's, it's dark. It's filled with lost. Come here to the house of God. And these people aren't lost. <coughs> but out there, it's amazing how yeah, Jesus didn't sit in the house. So I'm sitting here today. Come! Come! Instead, he, he left his father's house. And, and, and he sought after the lost. I think that's why that day when I met that, that girl was so profound in, in my life was so powerful. Here I'm, I'm questioning God and I'm questioning the, the motives of this man. And I'm upset and I'm angry that they, they wouldn't let me into this church. But God's saying, I, I got a purpose. And even if you don't understand or know my purpose, trust me. I know what I'm doing. And maybe only one person got saved that day. Maybe that girl changed her life because she heard the voice of God. And maybe that's all I was there for to do. Maybe that girl meant more to God than everybody who was sitting inside the church. And I think sometimes that's what we, we, we forget. We read the Bible and, and repent and repent and change our ways. But the one message God wants us all to hear, the one message God wants us to receive, I love you. You, says the Lord. And the love of God isn't seen through silver or gold or precious metals or houses or homes, temples or churches. God so loved you. He gave you his only begotten son that you may live and not die. God so loves you. He gave you Jesus Christ. And Jesus, if you're struggling, I broke my body for the many. Few have been chosen, but I broke my body so many may be saved.
I spilled my blood. Drink. Eat. Drink this wine. I spilled my blood for the ransom of many. Us, the believers, all being and wanting to be just like Jesus Christ. And one day we will be just like him. Moses says it's within you. He says you can do it. It's not too hard for you. Love God with all your heart and your soul. Can you see God? in yourself? Can you see God in me? Can you see God in the sinners? of God there is a profound change in their life and, and, and I think if we really wanted to change another person's life it's not going to be by saying hey crackhead get off the crack Hey, you drunk! Stop drinking! Maybe what they really need to hear, because something I found in my life is people do drugs because they're trying to, to mask the pain. People drink alcohol because they're trying to mask the pain. What is the pain they're trying to cover up? Not only does nobody love me, I don't love me. Well, let me tell you, who does love you? Jesus Christ loves you. So much. He's willing to die for you. Willing to give up everything for you. The blind man, I want to see. Then see. What did he want to see? I want to see the love of God. And look at it. Here I am. Zacchaeus. I want to see what all the commotion's about. I want to see the love of God. Jesus says, then take me into your home. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, if you repent of your sins, 
then salvation will come to you. He said, today salvation has come to your house. Today, I come to tell you how much God loves you. Everybody else in all the crowd said, no, let's look at his sin. Let's look at his wrong. Let's look at his failures. But Jesus said, he wanted to see the love of God. And here I am. If we want to be like Jesus, what do we want to bring to other people? The love of God. The love of God. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable. Because he was near to Jerusalem and because they were supposed, they were, they supposed that the kingdom of God would, was to appear immediately. I say it every day, Jesus is coming. People all across the world, around the world are, are saying Jesus is coming. And everybody's expecting him to appear immediately. And then he said, A noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then returned. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, ten dollars, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But the citizens hated him and sent delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him saying, Lord, your mina has 10 more minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful with very little. You shall have authority over 10 cities. And the second came to him saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came to him, saying, Lord, here's your mina, which I have kept laid away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words. You wicked servant, you knew that I was a severe man taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why? Then did you not put the money in the bank and at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you that everyone who has more will be given. But for, for the one who has not, even what he has, it will be taken away. But as for these minas, these enemies of mine, 
who do not want me to reign over them. Bring them here and slaughter them before me. Isn't that interesting? Jesus says, I, I came to bear fruit. I am the vine. And you are the fruit. And you also will bear fruit. And what is it we're, we're, we're talking about? Money? Souls? Personal gain? Each family has a lamb within that family. And their, their love for their family will save them. The faithfulness of a spouse will save the spouse. The faithfulness of a mother will save her children. Faithfulness of a father will save the entire household. To each family, a lamb was been, has been given. What is it God wants? What does God desire? That we would be saved by faith through Jesus Christ. A faith not of our own, but the faithfulness of God. Come to circumcise your heart, not your flesh. He who is faithful with the very little will be given a great amount. God expects good things from us. And it's not that God is shrewd and God is angry. By the power of your own words, you said, I was mean. You said, I reap what I have not sown. And so by the power of your measure, it will be rewarded to you. By the power of your faith, it will be rewarded to you. I believed with my heart and I believed with my soul that that young lady with boogies hanging out her nose, hair in her mask, looked like she'd been sleeping in the bushes, was loved by God. I believed it. And because I believed, She received it. And she fell on her knees and was weeping and crying. Because that's what she needed. That was what she needed to hear. They don't love me. Let me tell you who does love you. Jesus Christ. Because of him, heaven knows your name. Jesus loves you. And I can't believe God used me. I mean, 
when I think back on it today, God saw something good in me. Maybe something that I couldn't even see in myself. Because you were faithful with a little, I'll allow you some responsibility with the great. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, they will know you are a disciple of Jesus Christ if you have love for one another. Love as I have loved you. Presenting ourselves, our bodies, as a holy sacrifice. Just as Jesus presented himself as holy, a holy sacrifice for the salvation of many. There's a donkey, a jackass, Jesus says, I want you to go into the town ahead. I want you to untie, unbound that jackass. Bring him to me and if anybody asks you, why are you unbinding this jackass? Why are you untying that jackass? Because the Lord They will let him go. They obeyed the voice of God. And they went to the town ahead, and sure enough, there's a jackass tied to the tree post, right? And they began to untie him, and begin to unbound this jackass. And sure enough, somebody says, What are you doing untying that jackass? Lord needs him. They let him go. And then they put their covering. See, love covers over a multitude of sins. Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, I'm going to put my covering over you and make you a viable vessel for the Lord. They put their covering over the donkey. And they brought it to the Lord and the Lord sat on the donkey. And then they proceeded to Jerusalem. And people were throwing down their coverings, their coats and their clothing. Some people putting down palms, the branches of palm trees. Some people are singing out, Hosanna! And what is Hosanna? Save us, Lord! Save us to the Most High! Save us! Hosanna saying, save us! Many others were saying, blessed is he! Blessed is the King! who comes in the name of the Lord. People saw what they were doing. Tell them to stop doing that. They're glorifying you. He says, if I tell these people to stop, the very stones will cry out. I tell you the truth. You will not see the kingdom of heaven until you say, blessed is he who comes
comes in the name of the Lord. And when you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, then your eyes will be opened. And then you will see the King of Glory. That's all I'd like to say to you. I've seen your flag. 